You know, I've, I was basically going through several articles that has to do with Texas homeschoolers, and also there's some lobbies to restore parental rights. Now, in Texas, there's a bill called House Bill 2084 that's coined the Te- Texas Parental Rights and Restoration Act. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That bill was introduced by Phil King, and it has made it through committee. Um, unfortunately, it, uh, calen- it's sitting on calendars and doesn't look like it's going to get a vote on the House. I was just reading an update uh, on that earlier today from our friend at the Texas Homeschool Coalition, uh, Tim Lambert, and he is working um, diligently to try to use some legislative maneuvers to get that bill maybe amended onto another bill so that we can get that legislation out, but it would strengthen parental rights. We've had a number of cases here in Texas, and I'm sure we're not unique, um, where grandparents have uh, come in and the courts have sided with grandparents over the right uh, and authority of parents, uh, again, you know, kind of in a determining what we think is best for the child rather than allowing the parents to make those decisions about the upbringing and rearing of their children. And so it's key legislation. Uh, in addition to that, I don't know if, if you're aware, there was also House Bill 1611. Um, we've got some language in the law here in Texas that talks about uh, the courts being able to decide what's in the best interest of the child. And that bill, HB 1611, introduced by Representative Bott, would have made it very clear that it was the parents, the parents, who decide what's in the best interest of the child. Uh, unfortunately, 1611 appears to have died in the in committee, where good bills go to die, they say in Texas sometimes. So we've had a tough session. We have a biennial legislature in Texas, so we only meet once every two years, and we're just about to wrap up the session here. Uh, and we've had a lot of good legislation just don't make it through, so it's, it's been a tough session for us. You know, this is something that's happening across the nation, is that parental rights issues or bills or, or legislation are dying everywhere in committee. Uh, and I think it's because the government has a different view on who should direct the care, control, education, the upbringing of our children. And in the same article that I was quoting from uh, with regards to the Texas Parental Rights and Restoration Act, uh, the Texas Railroad Commissioner, Michael Williams, stated that a parent is the first and best educator of their children, and the biggest reservoir of energy does not come from underneath the ground, but from the youngsters standing on top of it. I couldn't agree with that more, and it complements a John Adams quote that I frequently use on the show here, and it's real simple. Children should be educated and instructed in the principles of freedom, and who better for that to come from than parents? Now, your children uh, are now uh, wonderful adults. Uh, They're healthy. They're ventured into the real world with uh, no ill effects from homeschooling. Do you think that they obtained a better instruction on the principles of freedom from you as as the parents instructing them, or do you think that they would have received that better from a public education system? You know, my husband and I are both um, products of the public school system, and we keep seeing our legislators pour more money and more money and more money, and for years I've been saying it's the curriculum stupid. I think, you know, President Bush said, it's, or, or was it President Clinton who said it's the economy stupid, and I kind of flipped that and said it's the curriculum stupid. I definitely see this um, uh, more liberal, socialist, politically liberal, socialist, humanist, uh, view being woven through the public school curriculum, and so I'm going to say that that on average, I would certainly believe that those homeschooling their children are using, by and large, curriculums that are more traditional, more classical uh, in their nature, and so those children tend to be more familiar with some of our founding documents, uh, the history of, of freedom and those societies that live free and those societies that live in more of a uh, tyrannical or uh, controlled type of environment. Uh, Certainly, there's all bents in both public school and home school, and we want to be real careful to to recognize and acknowledge that. You know, I know there are very successful home schools and there are very successful public school children, and then we, we, we have the other end of the spectrum as well. Um, I don't think any of us is immune to abuse or neglect or success. And, and that's one thing that 
I wish the courts were more wary of. It seems that, boy, the instant they find a homeschool student who may be struggling academically or socially or uh, nutritionally or whatever, they're ready to take that child away from the parents. And I'm thinking, how many kids do we have with the same problem in the public school system? It's not always uh, about something that the parents aren't doing. It's part of working together in that family to provide uh, the best environment for that child. So, yeah, I, I have to agree with you that homeschool children tend to be more familiar with those constitutional ideas and the ideas of freedom than their public school counterparts. You know, at what point in time did you decide that, you know, you wanted to run for governor? My daughter will tell you I'd much rather be outside digging weeds out of my flower beds than running for governor, but uh, it is imperative that we engage the fight for freedom. Um, you talked earlier about good bills dying in committee because our government, and our government is our elected officials. Our elected officials say one thing and do something else. We have got to do something different in this country if we are going to prevent our total collapse into some type of tyrannical um, government institution, and, and that's where we're headed. You can see it clearly that that's where we're headed. Um, I wish that our elected officials were more consistent with doing the things that they profess to believe in, but they are not. And so it's time for, I think, average citizens who care about the freedom, their freedom, the freedom of their neighbors, um, and the freedom of the country to step up and, and run in some of these races. And we are very encouraged here in Texas by the amount of support that we're getting in that regard. Uh, but probably uh, about middle of February, we made the decision to get in that race. We're still in an exploratory um, phase here, but those things are coming together. And I would expect that within the next uh, several weeks, certainly by the end of June, that we will have an official uh, launch campaign. Now, in 2010, that's the uh, the next Texas gubernatorial election. Uh, obviously, it's going to be held on November 2nd, uh, 2010. And uh, the incumbent is now, I, I believe, the longest consecutive holder of the office. His name is Rick Perry or James Perry, depending on how you know him. He's a Republican politician. He's uh, obviously... Uh, you know, got the incumbent advantage, uh, and he's the Republican again. You're running as a Republican. You are the chairperson of the, the Wharton County Republican Party, I believe. How do you intend on running head-to-head -head against this incumbent for the Republican nomination? Well, actually, uh, we have a number of candidates that have filed um, to run for governor on the Republican ticket. That primary is in March uh, of 2010. So it, it does require 50% to win the Republican nominee, 50% plus one. Uh, so it's likely that that will go into a runoff. And we're going to assemble the best campaign team that we can and do all that we can to get the message out to Texas. We believe that we Texans with common sense and shared common values deserve to have a governor who will defend those liberties and those common values. And right now we have one who talks about that but consistently doesn't do it. And so it's time for Mr. Perry to find himself another job and for uh, a hope for Deborah Medina to be seated in the governor's mansion and begin to restore some of the liberty that we've lost in Texas over the last several years. 